It's my great pleasure tonight to introduce, uh, you know, we hear the word patriot thrown around a lot. Uh, the words have ceased to have meaning, especially in Washington. You know, everybody's a hero now. When I was growing up, a hero was a sandwich. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a real hero was, uh, was something else. But the person you're about to hear from tonight is a hero in the classical sense, and a patriot in the classical sense. Brian Mass served our country for 12 years as a soldier in the United States Army, including the Elite Joint Special Operations Command. Yes. He was a bomb disposal expert, and while on his 2010 uh, deployment in Afghanistan, Brian was tasked with protecting his brothers from IEDs. While he was able to detect and destroy most of these IEDs, the very last IED caused him catastrophic injuries, including the loss of both legs. As a result of his service and sacrifice for our country, Brian Mass was awarded medals for valor, merit, and sacrifice, including the Bronze Star, the Army Commendation Medal for Valor, the Purple Heart, and the Defense Meritorious Service Medal. He retired as Staff Sergeant. Throughout his life, Brian Mast has been a staunch supporter of the State of Israel. During Israel's war with Hamas in the summer of 2014, Brian witnessed a number of disturbing anti-Israel demonstrations in Boston and at Harvard, where he was a full-time student, and decided he needed to help Israel in a tangible way. Brian took the time to go to Israel and volunteer with the Israel Defense Forces in January of 2015. Brian now lives in uh, southern Florida with his uh, wife and three children. It's always a pleasure to welcome someone from Florida to Washington because, as I like to say, they're coming from one Mickey Mouse operation to another. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> and he's running for Congress as if he hasn't achieved enough things. <laughs> Brian, there is counseling available for that, I want you to know. It's the 18th district, and I hope you'll support him and welcome him to the platform now, Brian Mast. Thank you. I couldn't be more honored to be here with you and to have the opportunity to speak about truth because that's what this night is all about. And the fact of the matter is, right now, the world, the, the world is attempting to sell whoever they can the lie that somehow the most peaceful country in the entire Middle East, Israel, is responsible for somehow preventing peace in the Middle East. And that is a complete lie. And this is something that I learned in the most amazing way at the, as I had the opportunity to go and serve along the side the soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces. While I was serving there, I had the opportunity each and every weekend to be hosted by different families for Shabbat dinner. And as I went to the home of each of these families, I realized something very important at each one of them. Every single one of these families was waiting for a son or a daughter or a grandson or a granddaughter to return home from their military duty in order to begin the festivities of Shabbat the dinner of Shabbat. And this, this struck, struck a chord in my mind, and I started to think about this as here in the United States, I had served 12 years, and I was very familiar with the fact that it wasn't the job of every son and daughter in the United States to serve, but it was the job in Israel for every son and daughter to don a uniform and serve in defense of the state of Israel. And I learned from that, as I am a father of three, and as much as I hope my kids one day enter service in the military, that I know there's there's no easier way to break me down as a parent than to think about losing one of my children. And that's the reality for every single parent and every single grandparent across Israel. That at one point in the life of their children, they will probably have to don a uniform and fire a weapon in defense of Israel. 
And it's for that reason that I know every single family across Israel truly desires nothing more than peace with every single one of their neighbors, Libya, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, whatever neighbor you want to pick throughout the Middle East, they want nothing more than peace because they want their children to grow and they want their children to go to school and they want their children to start families and they want their children to travel and they want their children to have a life. They don't want their children to have to go and fire a rifle in defense against lies that are being perpetuated. And this was the lesson that I learned. And I can tell you I learned this as well. I learned to compare and contrast our two militaries, but more so to parallel the service that exists between our two militaries and something that I couldn't be more proud to tell you about. I can tell you that the way that we fight and the commitment that we have to fight for the things that are important to us they couldn't parallel each other more. Those, those ideologies between the United States of America and Israel. We fight for freedom, and we fight for democracy, and we fight for human rights for all people. And when we're out there fighting for these things, we do it with a very specific willingness. It's the willingness to have snipers target us, and to have bombs dropped on us, and to walk across landmines or improvised explosive devices. We do it while we carry letters in our front pocket which we promise to deliver to our best friend's families, our best friend's loved ones, should anything ever happen to them while we're out defending our two great countries. That is the commitment and the way in which we go out and we defend every single thing that we fight for and that we, we determine that we will represent to the entire world regardless of the challenge that it presents to us to represent these ideologies to the entire world. That is our commitment, to represent these ideologies regardless of the cost to ourselves as individuals, regardless of the cost that it takes, uh, the, the toll that it takes on our countries. And it in, it's in that that I know that they're truly selfless individuals. And I couldn't be more proud to say that I served alongside both the defenders of Israel and the defenders of the United States of America. I don't speak a great deal of Hebrew. I picked up a few words while I was in Israel. Uh, most of them, I could say in polite company, a couple of them. <laughs> Not, but uh, the most important word that I learned is this. I hope uh, I do it justice to saying, and it's the word achim, or brothers. And it's the most important word that I learned because I learned truly that we are brothers. That is the truth. The United States of America and Israel are brothers in what we represent to the world and the way that we'll fight for that. Thank you.